एवरी वन वेलकम बैक टू माई चैनल डेंटल कैफे सो टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट द वर्क यूज फॉर क्राउन प्रिपरेशन फॉर पी एफ एम जेरिकोनिया एंड ऑल मेटल सो वील डिस्कस अबाउट ऑल द वर्क यूज इन द प्रिपरेशन ऑफ पी एफ एम जेरिकोनिया एंड ऑल मेटल एंड हाउ वील यूज दीज बर ओके देन लेट्स बिगिन द वीडियो एज यू कैन सी इन द फिगर फर्स्ट वन वी हैव राउंड एंडेड बर और टॉपिडो शेप्ड बर सो दीज आर द taper and the round ended burr or the taper and the torpedo shaped burr as you can see in the figure as you can see in this we have a one burr is taper and the flat ended and the rest two burr is taper and the round or the torpedo shaped so this is the difference between the round ended or torpedo shaped burr and the flat ended burr these burrs are used for the chamfer line preparation whether for deep or the simple chamfer line preparation okay then let's see the function of these burr so in first word we have a torpedo shape and that is why it is called torpedo shape and in second we have a round and apex and that is why it is called round ended burr so what is the function of both these were both these were are basically used for the chamfer line preparation the torpedo shaped one is used for the preparation of regular chamfer finish line for monolithic zirconia and the lingual margin of metal ceramic restorations only the lingual margin then uh, round ended burr are used for preparation of deep chamfer finish line and for metal crown preparation only for metal crown preparation or the lingual margin of the metal ceramic restoration we use torpedo shaped or round ended burr now how to use round ended burr or the torpedo shaped burr so first of all you have to place the burr parallel to the long axis of the tooth look at the figure this is we have a long axis of the tooth and this is we have a torpedo shaped burr and the long axis of the burr should coincide the long axis of the tooth this is how we'll place the burr at the time of preparation and then second finish lines are provided by sinking half of the burr it means we are not completely sink the burr as you can see in the figure we'll only sink the half of the burr and half of the burr is out of the prepared surface then only we'll get a chamfer finish line now what is the reason of sinking the half of the burr as you can see in the figure that chamfer finish line has obtuse angle finish line how look at the figure we have a burr and the angle formed by sinking half of the burr is an obtuse angle you can very well see in the next figure the angle formed by the finish line by using round ended or the torpedo shaped burr is the obtuse angle so in chamfer finish line we have a obtuse angle so to get obtuse angle finish line we'll sink the half of the burr not the complete burr in chamfer finish line now next we have a tapered flat ended burr as you can see in the figure the burr have a taper shank and a flat and so this is we call tapered flat ended burr basically used for the shoulder line preparation in case of pfm let's see the uses of flat tapered burr so the function of tapered flat ended burr is look at the figure the shank of the burr, burr is taper and the tip is flat as i already told told you now the function commonly used for preparing shoulder finish line for pfm crown most commonly used burr for preparation of pfm crown and for preparing axial proximal and occlusal surfaces as i told you lingual surface is prepared by the round ended or torpedo shaped burr and the proximal axial and occlusal surfaces are prepared by the tapered flat ended burr now how to use tapered flat ended burr so first of all burr should be held parallel to the long axis of the tooth as in case of round ended or torpedo shaped burr so this is we have a long axis of the tooth this is we have a burr and it should be parallel to the long axis of the tooth at the time of tooth preparation then finish line are provided by sinking the entire burr here is a catch 
in case of round ended or torpedo shape we are only we are going to sink only half of the bow but in case of flat ended bow we are going to sink the entire bow and what is the reason to sink entire bow let's see so the shoulder finish line is a right angled finish line so as you can see in the figure the angle formed by the flat ended bow is a 90 degree angle in the next figure you can very well see the angle formed by the prepared tooth surface is a 90 degree angle so that is why we are going to sink the entire bow to get the shoulder finish line that is 90 degree angled finish line as you can see shoulder finish line is a 90 degree angle and the chamfer finish line is the obtuse angle greater than 90 degree and because of the 90 degree angle there is an increase in stress concentration and chances of tooth and the processes chip off and fracture is more in shoulder finish line as compared to the chamfer finish line and due to this reason we have given a modification that is shoulder finish line with bevel so that the stress concentration will decrease and next bow used for the tooth preparation is wheel shaped bow as you can see the apex of the bow is the wheel shaped and that is why it is called wheel shaped bow and the next we have a flame shaped or the football shaped bow as you can see the apex of the bow is flame or the football shaped. that is why it is called flame shaped or the football shaped bow flame shaped bow and the wheel shaped bow both these bow have almost same function they are especially used in the anterior region for canine and the incisor for cingulum reduction both the bar are used for the cingulum reduction so the uses of flame and the wheel shaped bow is first of all as you can see the first bow we have in a wheel shape and the second we have in a flame shape that is why they are called so so they are used for the reduction of lingual fossa the bar are placed on the lingual fossa to reduce the cingulum and that is why they are basically used in the anteriors in canine and the incisor now how to use flame and wheel shaped bow so the widest part of the bow rests on the deepest concavity on the palatal and the lingual aspect of the tooth look at the figure this is we have a lingual fossa in concave shape on the palatal or the lingual aspect of the tooth and the widest part of the bow should be placed on the concavity to reduce the cingulum rest all the bow which are used in the tooth preparation are discussed in the part 2 i hope this video is helpful for you to understand about the bow if this video is helpful for you then don't forget to like share and subscribe my youtube channel and hit the bell icon for the latest update